Tonight on Fox, journey with us as we turn back the pages of time. The site of the original, this is where it all began. A midsummer classic became just that. Now the stakes are raised, the intensity is back. Chi Town is certainly not Chi Town, and baseball's biggest Chi Bright with so much riding on the line. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 74th All Star Game. I'm Jeannie Zalasko along with Kevin Kennedy in Chicago. Definitely our kind of town, Kevin. It is our kind. Welcome to the 74th All Star Game. And now it's time to meet the National League coaches and reserves. First, the coaches. From the Pittsburgh Pirates, manager Lloyd McClendon. From the St. Louis Cardinals, manager Tony La Rosa. Now the players from the Arizona Diamondbacks, outfielder Luis Gonzalez. From the Atlanta Braves, shortstop Rafael Fercal. Selected to start but unable to play due to injury, second baseman Marcus Giles. Outfielder Andrew Jones. Pitcher John Smoltz. And pitcher Russ Ortiz. From the Chicago Cubs, Pitcher, Mark Pryor. And pitcher, Kerry Wood. From the Cincinnati Reds, third baseman, Aaron Boone. From the Colorado Rockies, injured and unable to play this evening, pitcher Sean Chacon. And outfielder Preston Wilson. From the Florida Marlins, second baseman Luis Castillo. Third baseman Mike Lowell. And pitcher Dontrell Willis. From the Houston Astros, pitcher Billy Wagner. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, catcher Paul LaDuca. And pitcher Eric Gagne. From the Milwaukee Brewers, outfielder Jeff Jenkins. And first baseman Richie Sexton. From the New York Mets, Pitcher Armando Benitez. From the Philadelphia Phillies, pitcher Randy Wolf. From the Pittsburgh Pirates, pitcher Mike Williams. From the St. Louis Cardinals, pitcher Woody Williams. From the San Diego Padres, outfielder Rondell White. Now let's meet the American League All-Star Reserves and Coaches. First, the coaches from your Chicago White Sox, manager Jerry Manuel. From the Minnesota Twins, manager Ron Gardenhire. Now the players from the Anaheim Angels, pitcher Brendan Donnelly. From the Baltimore Orioles, outfielder Melvin Mora. From the Boston Red Sox, shortstop Nomar Garcia Parra. Catcher Jason Veritek. From your Chicago White Sox, designated hitter Carl Everett. And outfielder, Maglio Ordonez.
from the Cleveland Indians, pitcher C.C. Sabathia. From the Detroit Tigers, outfielder Dimitri Young. From the Kansas City Royals, injured and unable to play this evening, first baseman Mike Sweeney. And pitcher Mike McDougall. From the Minnesota Twins, pitcher Eddie Guardado. From the New York Yankees, pitcher Roger Clemens. And first baseman, Jason Giambi. From the Oakland Athletics, pitcher Mark Balder. Pitcher Keith Folk. Catcher Ramon Hernandez. And pitcher Barry Zito. From the Seattle Mariners, pitcher Shigatoshi Hasegawa. Second baseman, Brett Boone. And pitcher, Jamie Moyer. From the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, pitcher Lance Carter. From the Texas Rangers, third baseman, Hank Blaylock. From the Toronto Blue Jays, outfielder Vernon Wells. And pitcher Roy Halliday. Now let's meet the National League manager and starting lineup. The manager from the Chicago Cubs, Dusty Baker. The National League honorary captain, an 11-time All-Star and 2003 inductee into the Baseball Hall of Fame, Gary Carter. Leading off from the St. Louis Cardinals, shortstop Edgar Renteria. Batting second from the St. Louis Cardinals, center fielder Jim Edmonds. Batting third from the St. Louis Cardinals, left fielder Albert Pujols. Batting fourth from the San Francisco Giants, designated hitter, Barry Bonds. Batting fifth from the Atlanta Braves, right fielder, Gary Sheffield. Batting sixth from the Colorado Rockies, first baseman, Todd Helton. Batting seventh from the St. Louis Cardinals, third baseman, Scott Rowland. Batting eighth from the Atlanta Braves, catcher Javi Lopez. Batting ninth from the Montreal Expos, second baseman, Jose Vidro. And warming up in the right field bullpen from the San Francisco Giants, pitcher Jason Schmidt. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2003 National League All-Stars.
Now let's meet the American League manager and starting lineup. The manager from the Anaheim Angels, Mike Sosha. The American League honorary captain, a 10-time All-Star who put the go in Chicago's go-go socks of the 1950s, Luis Aparicio. Leading off from the Seattle Mariners, right fielder Ichiro Suzuki. Batting second from the New York Yankees, second baseman Alfonso Soriano. Batting third from the Toronto Blue Jays, first baseman Carlos Delgado. Batting fourth from the Texas Rangers, shortstop Alex Rodriguez. Batting fifth from the Anaheim Angels, left fielder Garrett Anderson. Batting sixth from the Seattle Mariners, designated hitter Edgar Martinez. Batting seventh from the New York Yankees, center fielder Hideki Matsui. Batting eighth from the Anaheim Angels, third baseman Troy Gloss. Batting ninth from the New York Yankees, catcher Jorge Posada. And warming up in the left field bullpen from your Chicago White Sox, Esteban Loaiza. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2003 American League All-Stars. Ladies and gentlemen, baseball lost one of its pioneers last month with the passing of Larry Doby, who in 1947 became the first African-American player in the American League. League Baseball All-Star Game. We are reminded on this side of the town, they don't like the Cubs. We've had a lot of nice ovations. The anthems have been sung. It's baseball time and it's yours next on Fox. During this past week, the Cubs and the Braves getting together on Saturday. We had a chance to put down our anchor here in Chicago and it has been a joy being in this city getting ready for this All-Star Game. These players have had a lot of fun and now it's time to play a baseball game. The American League All-Stars hit the field and we get ready for the start of this one. Esteban Loaiza, who during the pregame introductions, I guarantee you he's never had an ovation that sounded like that. He pitches for the hometown Chicago White Sox. So a sentimental pick and he has had a terrific first half, unlike any he has ever had at the big league level. 31 years old, he's bounced around from team to team, traded twice, a free agent. And here he is with the Chicago White Sox, 11 wins. And he will try to tame this National League lineup, which, as it would be in any All-Star game, throws a ton of lumber at you. You look at Gary Sheffield and part of the coaching staff in that National League bench. And we will start it out, if you paid attention during the introductions, with three Cardinals right out of the gate for the National League side. And Esteban Loaiza takes his warm-up tosses 
before Edgar Renteria steps in. Home plate umpire is Tim McClellan. He has been voted year after year one of, if not the best, umpires in the major leagues. He's got a slow strike call, so we'll monitor that. That's my disclaimer right here at the top for when I blow my third and fourth strike call of the night. Joined by Larry Young, Gary Darling, Gary Cedarstrom, Mark Carlson, and Bill Welke around the bases and in the outfield. Edgar Renteria will be first up, and Tim, we talked to Mike Sosha, Esteban Loaiza's manager. He said, are there any regulations for how long a starting pitcher can go? I mean, this could be, if he rolls, a three, maybe four-inning effort tonight for Loaiza. Well, with the lineups of both teams, you would expect uh, guys getting on base and pitchers. Uh, I wouldn't think they'd pitch more than two innings unless, of course, three up, three down, and that's highly unusual in all-star play. So Esteban's manager, Jerry Manuel, who was greeted with a mixed reaction here at U.S. Cellular Field, talks it over with Mike Socia, who's getting a look at Loiza for the first time as one of his own. Glad you're with us on Fox 74th All-Star Game, and away we go. Up there, ready to swing, Renteria strike one. Edgar comes into this game, sixth in the National League, hitting 331. And he has the number one average across Major League Baseball the last two seasons of all the shortstops. So that includes Garcia Parra and Jeter and A-Rod, you name it, Renteria has the best average. It'll be Renteria, then Edmonds, then Pools against Loiza. And that hits the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. That is a cut fastball to the outside part of the plate. Loiza throws that same pitch to the inside part of the plate as his strikeout pitch. So Renteria set up at a ball and two strikes. And that just missed the inside corner. That was uh, the pitch that just missed the inside corner the first time. Jorge Posada sitting inside and that ball inside. So the count two and two. Renteria takes outside full count. Edgar Renteria a player that Dusty Baker manager of the Cubs calls the smartest player in the National League. Here's a full count pitch and a ground ball to short. That's where a rod plays up over one away for the National League here in the first inning. Alex Rodriguez, a Gold Glove award-winning shortstop. You know what he does with the bat. We'll detail that when he comes to the plate. Here comes Jim Edmonds from the Cardinals with Pujols, also from St. Louis, to bat third in this National League lineup. First time that teammates have led off the game 1-2-3 since the Big Red Machine produced Rose, Morgan, and Foster in 1978. Home plate umpire Tim McClellan just walked over and said something to the American League dugout. Now they said, no, you want the National League dugout. They're over there to your right. And the problem was there was no first base coach. Now there is Gene Kleins, formerly a hitting instructor with Dusty Baker and Barry Bonds in San Francisco. And now, of course, with the Cubs. First pitch to Edmonds misses up and away ball one. 95 miles per hour from Esteban Loiza, who's obviously charged up before a quiet crowd here at U.S. Cellular Field, 1-0 pitch. Too far outside, it's 2-0. Quiet yet anticipatory. You will not see any hitter on, on either roster swing like Jim Edmonds. 2-1. He swings up at the ball. He finishes high. This the cut fastball on the hands of Edmonds. A 2-1 pitch, Edmonds fists one into right field, and that ball's going to drop in for a base hit. Edmonds is thinking two, but not with Ichiro. Other right fielders maybe, but not with that arm out in right. Getting to the ball quickly, and he has a rifle on that right shoulder. Joe, in my experience, I have seen one right fielder better than Ichiro defensively, and that was the great Roberto Clemente. You hit it right on the head when you said he got to the ball, and getting to the ball stopped Edmonds at first. So now it's Pujols who steps in, and if you haven't paid attention to his first two-plus seasons, 
That's too bad because he's doing things that haven't been done in the big leagues before. Came in second in last night's home run hitting contest. Lost out to Garrett Anderson of the Anaheim Angels. Strike one as he shot that one foul off to the right. People already talking triple crown candidate for Albert Pujols with the kind of numbers he has put up the first half of this season. Leads the major leagues in average as he rips another foul. It's 0 2. First player to back up a rookie season with a 300 or better average, 30 or more home runs, 100 or more RBIs, and 100 or more runs. He has done it each of his first two years in the big leagues, and that had never been done. Hey, 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 hey. Can't do that. That's Edmund saying. Jim, this time it counts. 0-2 oh, on Pujols at the plate. Into center field and breaking back on it is Matsui. Two out in the inning and Edmonds back to first base. So now you've got Barry Bonds who draws an interesting reaction regarded as one of the best players ever all time single season home run king with 73 number four on the all time home run list with 643 and now the shift is put on on the infield defense basically in the outfield where they play deep and they play bonds to pull Barry Bonds interestingly in the outfield a shade to pull, not quite as dramatic as infield play. First pitch is strike. There is no part of the ballpark in which Bonds cannot hit a ball out of. Runner at first with two out, no balls and a strike. And a huge rip by Bonds and a 94 mile per hour pitch on his hands. It's 0 2. There is Cal Ripken Jr. The cut fastball and on the hands to Bonds. Good pitch by Loaiza. So now the crowd climbs into the game with a count of 0 2. One ball, two strikes. Only 17 home runs shy of Willie Mays for third place on the all time home run list. Protected in the lineup by Gary Sheffield, who waits on deck. He'll be 39 in a couple of weeks. Jammed again, and a fly ball into right field for Ichiro. And that's a scoreless first inning for the Chicago White Sox right-hander, Esteban Loaiza. He's taking care of Bonds once tonight. After a half, no score in Chicago. And now for good measure, the American League did not send a first base coach out. Here in the first inning, Alfredo Griffin sprints to his spot. What's good for one is good hey, for the other. Come you can on. have no advantage in a game like this, so. Mickey Hatcher enjoying every moment of it. Jason Schmidt on the mound. And Ichiro, as he does so often, hammers at that first pitch and grounds out to Todd Held. One pitch, one out. And if people, Tim, don't know how good this right-hander is, it's because he pitches out on the West Coast. A lot of the highlights get to the East Coast late. You might not catch how good Jason Schmidt is. 30 years old. He's got a mid to high 90s fastball, a great slider, and he's one of the game's best right now. Going through a, a tough season, his mom, Vicky, dying in April of brain cancer. He missed 10 days from the Giants, but the Giants know how good he is. With one out, Soriano goes after the second pitch and flies it into right center. Schmidt is thinking this is awfully easy. Two out. This is the type of inning that would warrant a pitcher pitching three innings. I'm sure Dusty Baker's thinking that right now. Two pitches, two outs. And now Delgado will walk to the plate. And we'll see if Schmidt gets a free pitch on the first one to Delgado. Watch out. Typically, a team would never let an opposing pitcher throw three pitches to get through a half inning. But Ichiro went after the first pitch. Soriano went after the first pitch. And Carlos Delgado will check his swing. Ball one. 
Carlos Delgado has 97 RBIs at the break. More games than a guy like Hank Greenberg. Even Juan Gonzalez as the season starts earlier now and we're playing this all-star game later in the month of July but still 97 RBIs to lead the major leagues and 28 home runs to lead the American League. One ball one strike two out nobody on here in the bottom of the first and that's into left center field slicing two Pujols and that's a one two three easy inning for Jason Schmidt. We have played one quick one here on the south side no score. First pitch of the second inning is on its way from Loiza to misses low and away to Gary Sheffield. Sheffield is seventh in the National League, hitting 327. He has driven in 70, tied for fifth. And the 1-0 pitch is popped up right side. Foul ball. Delgado gives it a look. Might have a play, and he makes a fantastic catch for the out. Carlos Delgado up along the rail, reaching in for out number one. Terrific play by Delgado. He took a little peek toward the stands, made the catch, toppled in, but caught the ball. Very nicely done. Carlos Tosca, the manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, wherever he is watching, just gasped. <laughs> Get his knees away from that railing. Right. One out, nobody on. Here is Todd Helton. And he takes a ball. Helton, from 2000 through this year, has the number one batting average in Major League Baseball. You can say, well, a lot of that has to do with playing in Colorado. He also has the most hits and RBIs. He does it at home. He does it on the road. Soft hands, former college quarterback, as he takes inside. And the count goes two and one. Roger Clemens, a late addition to this squad for the American League, is getting ready. We understand he will work the third inning. That misses low, three and one on Helton with Scott Rowland on deck. Dangerous pitch for Luiza right here. He has gotten in on the last four hitters. Hits the outside corner and it's a full count. He jammed Edmonds, who got a hit. He jammed Pujols, Bonds, and then Sheffield. So a 3 2 pitch. Helton strikes out. So Loiza comes back to get him, and the first strikeout of the evening belongs to Esteban Loiza. Again, the cut fastball. Nothing fancy out of Loiza so far. It's interesting to note that both Loiza and Schmidt, the starters in tonight's All-Star game, formerly on the same staff in Pittsburgh. Can you say the name Schmidt? You think third baseman? And here's a guy who started his career with the Philadelphia Phillies, Scott Rowland, who takes inside for ball one. He has been bothered by a severe neck strain that he suffered in Boston three weeks ago. But he's hitting 278, 18 home runs, 62 RBIs. He's jammed, a pop up, right side. Inning is over. High scoring, Tim. <laughs> High scoring, Tim. Hey, one and a half innings. Come on. One hit, that's it. No score. The 2003 All Star Game on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. Look at that view. The lake, U.S. Cellular Field, and the All Star Game, and Alex Rodriguez. A Rod waits till they turn the video board off in center field or at least put a still picture up. And here's the first pitch at the bottom of the second. Fastball misses high, 94 miles per hour. Our sprint virtual manager question is who will break Henry Aaron's career home run record? Barry Bonds, Alex Rodriguez, someone else, or nobody? To answer the question, use your PCS vision phone from Sprint. That's foul. Or log on to FoxSports.com, keyword MLB on Fox. Well, sir, your guess, your pick would be, who would it be? This guy, because of his age, his youth. This guy, because of the kind of pace he set the last few years. Nobody. Racer I, X, who is it? I think A-Rod, because of his age, because of his position. He will be 28 years old within a month and is already 
25 home runs behind Cal Ripken. Counts two balls and a strike. Schmidt back to work and a fastball misses low. It's three and one. Let's say that again. This guy hasn't even turned 28 yet. Has not turned 28. The fastest for a player to reach 300 home runs. You're looking at him right at your screen. The 3-1 pitch, a dangerous delivery, and A-Rod ready to jump on it. It's a full count. There's nobody in the game today that enjoys the phrase at this pace more than Tim McCarver. So we will look at the sort of pace that he has set. That will uh, that'll happen as we go upward and onward. 768, that's the project projection. Mark it down, refer back to it in the future. Struck him out on a good pitch down and away, and Jason Schmidt gets his first of the evening. Good fastball low and away, probably ball four. I tell you, both pitchers have been dealing so far. Let's just talk, because I, I can tell with the kind of pace this thing's going to get away from us here early with regard to talking about the strategy. But when you sit down and you talk to Mike Sosha, and he talked to Kevin Kennedy and our pregame crew yesterday along with Dusty Baker, here's Garrett Anderson, the home run hitting champ, takes a strike. You get the feeling that Mike Sosha buys into this whole idea a little more, that he is thinking within this game, the matchups he wants to get, where he's going to use certain relievers. And Dusty Baker is more, while not saying we're just going to try to get everybody in the game, is more in the category of trying to make everybody happy and if at all possible, get everybody on that bench with some pitching exceptions into this game. Yeah, I think concisely, Socia is worried about the matchups in the middle innings. They don't have to worry about anything if all the pitchers continue to do this. By the way, I just got a message on my cell phone from David Hill, our boss. He said, redo the opening. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go back. Let's start over. First five have been retired by the right-hander Schmidt, and Edgar Martinez walks in. He is here as the DH. The National League side, their DH in this game is Barry Bonds. So that leads you to the next point. If this is a tight game, and if you are playing to win, and if this time it counts, and it stays tight, how could you justify taking a guy like Barry Bonds out of the lineup after, let's say, two at bats? He would have a tough time doing that, but Dusty implying before the game that Bonds would hit two times. Of course, he's the designated hitter. He's not playing in the field. Dusty's saying that he's earned the right to hit as many times as he wants. He certainly is, as he wants, he has certainly earned that right. So we will see. If the game, the way I look at it, Joe, if the game continues at this quick a pace and the pitchers are that successful, I think Bonds will hit more than two times. No balls, two strikes. Schmidt could strike out the side here in the second inning. And missing up and away. Edgar Martinez is number nine in the league with 64 RBIs. As the number one batting average all time among designated hitters. D.H. came into Major League Baseball in 1970. And Martinez and oh goodness hit in the helmet. Oh my goodness Edgar Martinez hit in the helmet. And Jason Schmidt the pitcher who let the pitch go immediately went down wishing he could pull that pitch back with two strikes hitters are more inclined to get hit because they protect the outside part of the plate trainer out with Edgar to see if he's all right it was rather a glancing blow hitting on the left side of the head at least the ball caroming back to the screen it was not a, a direct hit but hard enough. You can see the reaction of Jason Schmidt. My gosh. And thank goodness Edgar oh, immediately boy. got back up. Oh, He's okay. We'll be able to continue and we'll take a listen to that. And Martinez and oh goodness hit in the helmet. Oh, a crisp sound yet as you say it did glance off the helmet and back up onto the screen. So thankfully. Edgar Martinez is okay to continue. 
it's cracked. Cracked his helmet. Sammy Sosa, who had the bill area of the helmet crack earlier this season in a game against the Pittsburgh Pirates in Pittsburgh against Salomon Torres, had his batting helmet shattered, and that thing suffers a crack. As Todd Helton plays behind Edgar Martinez at first, and Hideki Matsui stands in. And a little flare that's going to drop into left field for a base hit. So a hit batsman, a base hit the other way by Matsui. And Troy Gloss will come up and with a base hit could put the American League on top. Off the hands, we have seen a lot of very good hitters jammed early in this ball game. But Matsui finding a hole in left field. You can see right off the trademark. The trademark's about Oh, I guess halfway up the bat below the sweet spot. Here's Gloss MVP of this past World Series for the champion Angels two on with two out no score in the second and a fastball is poured in for a strike you see a guy like Matsui Ichiro is in the lineup for the American League and you wonder how many millions are watching in Japan where it's 808 tomorrow morning. Two on, two out. Gloss takes a pitch up and away. In fact, I guess because it's tomorrow morning, they already know who wins this game. <laughs> they know where the World Series will start come October. It's rush hour. But don't spoil it for us. Rush hour in Tokyo, but they're rushing to a television set. One ball, one strike, two on, two out. And that is on the outside corner, strike two. Gloss since 99 leads all big league third baseman in home runs. He's hit 15 this season. Typically you say the pretty swings belong to left handed batters. I think Troy Gloss has a pretty right handed swing. A one two pitch. Still one and two. You throwing in with me on that one or are you staying silent over there. No. You're I'm not, not throwing. throwing in with you on that one. All I right. think uh, Troy Gloss is a power hitter. I don't think he's ever going to hit for a high average. It's just smooth. It's not violent. It's. But he strikes out 160 so times. What? A I'm year. talking about his swing. I'm not talking about strikeouts. I'm not talking about contact. Oh. No. <laughs> one two pitch. Beautiful. That is. <laughs> 85 miles per hour from Schmidt. Schmidt was rolling. Struck out. Rodriguez struck out Garrett Anderson then he hit Edgar Martinez with two strikes on the hitter hit him in the helmet Matsui flared a hit to left and now it's one and two on gloss Schmidt could strike out the side here in the second wouldn't go after it laid off two balls two strikes I was thinking uh, after hitting Edgar Martinez if you're Jason Schmidt in a game like this you're not going to want to come inside anymore Martinez on at second base with two outs he has stayed away from Gloss still was pretty swung and missed that's it Schmidt strikes out the side in the second here comes the rocket no score back after this from your local station. The aerial coverage of tonight's game courtesy of the Aquafina Purity One light ship. With a little pure luck you could be spotted by the light ship for a chance to win pure cash. There's a Hall of Famer in our midst Tim McCarver and he is on the mound the Rocket Roger right. Clemens. Roger Clemens the last guy named to either club at the expense of Barry Zito. Joe we were talking about it right before game time how well Barry Zito handled that whole thing. Yeah, before we talk about Clemens, how about in this day and age, a guy who won the Cy Young Award last year saying, I understand, I'm not upset, I just wish I had known because it was an awkward time when he was told basically getting to the ballpark that he was no longer an all-star and Clemens, because Zito pitched on Sunday, was going to take his spot. That was the splitter, Lopez going after it. Roger Clemens his last year after winning 300 three weeks ago. Defensive swing by Javi Lopez. He is number three on the all time list in strikeouts. 
three hundred one career victories. And still with the kind of season he's putting together this year worthy. It's not just a goodbye wave. I mean he is still effective and worthy of a spot on this all star staff. The numbers for Clemens and the day after Roger won three hundred. We interviewed him in the Yankee dugout. And makes it two and two. And I told him that if he did retire this year and he appears set on retirement that he would be the hardest throwing retired pitcher in America. <laughs> and I stick by that. Here's a two two. That's the third sounded like Lopez broke his bat. Gloss gets rid of it and that's one out here in the third inning. Only one base runner so far for the National League tonight's Radio Shack trivia question is who drove in the first run in all star game history not who hit the first home run in all star game history happened back in 1933 just across the parking lot from here in old Comiskey Park Ruth is the answer to the home run question but not the answer to the first RBI Jose Pedro taps one foul right off what looks to be letterbox catcher cam that was the oddest swing I think it knocked our catcher cam out for a second bottom hand came off the bat one ball one strike on Fedro who's playing because of the mild concussion suffered by Marcus Giles this past weekend in the series here at Wrigley across town one ball one strike and that's on the outside corner Moyer warming up and let's go back to Friday at Wrigley Field Mark Pryor and Marcus Giles Pryor banged up a bit Giles with the concussion he didn't play the rest of the series and isn't playing tonight two and two on Vidro you saw Pryor the next day in the clubhouse you said all right what hurts you said nothing he said nothing Marcus Giles on the other hand went to the hospital was released that night suited up Saturday and Sunday. Pedro strikes out and that's two up two down against Roger Clemens. We've talked about it before if Clemens wanted to go through an Eckersley type career change or a John Smoltz type career change if he didn't want to start and he's still an effective starter. You wonder how long he could pitch in those short bursts as a closer in the big leagues but this is it. Yep, of course, Smoltz was somewhat younger than Roger when he started relieving. Eckersley younger than either. The way he is throwing this year for the Yankees and Joe Torrey shows no signs of letting up. Philly fans will be happy that Wolf is coming in the game. That's a strike in at the knees to Renteria, who was career strikeout victim number 4,000. Took a picture with Roger the next afternoon with four fingers up. Big smile on his face. Gets a piece in the count one and two. We noticed an enormous weight off the shoulders of Roger Clemens that next afternoon after he won number 300 on that Friday night. And consequently, the Yankees really took off after that point. They were both relieved. One two pitch. That's it. Back to back strikeouts for Clemens. Zip as far as offense so far. Bottom of the third inning. It's outside of Chicago, no score. We go into the bottom of the third inning. There is no score. The American League will bat. That means that Posada will be first up, then Ichiro, then Soriano. Radio Shack trivia question Who drove in the first run in All Star game history? The answer Lefty Gomez. 1933 game at Comiskey Park. Gomez singled home. Jimmy Dykes in the second inning Babe Ruth's two run home run occurred in the third. So fittingly Ruth hit the first all star game home run. But Gomez got the first RBI and here is Randy Wolf 10 game winner with the Philadelphia Phillies who right now are at the top of the list in the wild card chase in the National League. There's a strength to Posada. Philadelphia with the additions of David Bell even though David's on the disabled list David Bell playing for the Giants last year but Jim Tomey 23 home runs over the first half breaking ball is in for a strike to Posada who Tim is really one of the new breed of catchers who is not really a catch and throw receiver he is an offensive catcher 
and is putting together a season where he's on pace for about 30 home runs. Terrific arm. Got him looking. With one out, nobody on. Ichiro coming up, and let's go down to the dugout and check in with Kevin Kennedy. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Roger, was this something that just was meant to be? Everybody's saying Roger Clemens has to be at the All Star game, and it happened for you. Well, it was, it was unexpected, and uh, I'm just real thankful that I got a chance to work, and uh, I thanked all the guys for having me here. This was your ninth appearance. Is it just as exciting the, this time as it was in your first? Yeah, I was a uh, little, I had a few emotions out there during the anthem, and uh, just trying to look around and, and think, and just trying to enjoy it being my last one. Now, you've told us before that you're going to retire at the end of this year, so I, I would assume, obviously, that's going to be your last All-Star game. Is that still intact? Yes. Um, again, I just, I just, I'm real thankful to have the opportunity to come out here and it's still pretty neat to go out there and uh, get up on that hill and with all these other great, uh, great players. Roger, good to be here. Good to see you. Nine-time All-Star. He's here. This is it for Roger Clemens. Back up the booth. All right, Kevin, thanks. And thanks to Roger Clemens. He goes a 1-2-3 inning as Ichiro takes outside. Two balls and a strike. How many guys, no matter what professional sport you want to name, go out as effective and quote unquote on top as a guy like Roger Clemens is going to hang it up. One guy's in American League uniform tonight and that's Edgar Martinez. It might be his last year and here he is in the All Star game. Three balls and a strike on Ichiro who went after the first pitch and grounded out in the first. But you're right not many. Three balls and a strike with one out. Ichiro takes ball four, a one out walk. One of the factors in a decision like that would be money. And because of the money that somebody like Roger Clemens has made over the years, as opposed to guys who played back in your era, trying to cash in another check. I know that hurt a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Roger Clemens doesn't have to play for long term financial security. He That's probably right. achieved that back in 1988. And wants to spend uh, more time with his four boys, his four sons. There's Jay Harwitz, the publicity director for the New York Mets. And here is Alfonso Soriano. Look at how he hangs into the strike zone. That's in the dirt. Lopez can't find it, and Ichiro will scoot down to second easily. It will go as a wild pitch. But you can see Soriano over the plate like that talking to Jason Baratek yesterday Ichiro going to second base after a short delay Baratek saying that Ichiro hangs over the plate so much that when he's sitting inside he can't see the pitcher that's fouled out of play one ball one strike in other words Soriano's arms are dangling down and recently when the Boston Red Sox were at Yankee Stadium the fourth game a series in which they split Pedro Martinez hit Soriano. He hit Derek Jeter. Both went to the hospital. Both are fine. But uh, as Pedro said, you've got to pitch Soriano inside. You've got to move him off the plate. And I concur. If you don't, you pitch to his sweet zone. One ball, one strike. That is hammered foul. And if you're going to be on top of the plate as much as Soriano is, it reminds you of how quick those hands oh, are yeah. and how quick they have to be to get to that ball. Absolutely. This pitch is inside, but Soriano hanging over the plate. In my experience, Joe, in 20 years of catching in the major leagues, I was never in a position where I couldn't see the pitcher. And Veritek saying that yesterday was important. Hitchero stealing third on a pop-up. Wolf with a chance but can't get there. Foul ball. And the count still one and two on Soriano. And that last pitch was why you have to pitch Soriano inside. He ties him up with the fastball. Suzuki blazing speed. And this could very well have been a double play had Wolf made the catch and thrown to second base in a hurry. But there's Soriano hanging over the plate. And that's why Major League pitchers have to pitch him inside. Mike Sosha telling us before the game that he will run in tonight's game. It'll be a lot more run and hit as opposed to hit and run. You run with any idea of stealing the base and let the hitters hit. If they like it, they swing at it. If they don't, they take it. And then the base runner is on his own. And Suzuki was stealing third on that pitch inside. Now another one, two. With Lopez set up outside, and Wolf picks up the strikeout, his second of the inning. 
So with two out and Ichiro still at second, Carlos Delgado walks to the plate with a chance to drive home a run. And you look at what he is doing this season and his rankings in the American League in home runs, RBIs, slugging percentage, runs. This guy's a former catcher, now first baseman, and all world for the Toronto Blue Jays. Combined what he's done with his all-star teammate Vernon Wells, it's hard to believe Toronto loses games. That's a strike to Delgado. The Blue Jays making a real run at the Yankees, but they find themselves nine games behind New York going into the break. That was a high curveball call by McClellan. Delgado flied out to left his first time up to end a five pitch first inning for Schmidt. That's a fastball that misses outside a ball and a strike. On deck Alex Rodriguez. Posada struck out a walk a wild pitch with Ichiro aboard a strikeout of Soriano and now Delgado could put the American League on top no chance for Pujols one nothing AL on a two out RBI hit by Carlos Delgado. When a pitcher gets strike one with one pitch. You can pretty well figure that you're going to see it again. The first pitch was a curveball strike. Wolf came back with the curveball, and the first run of this ball game scores. And at 8:30 a.m., dancing in the streets of Tokyo. So now A Rod stands in, calls time. Major League record for home runs by a shortstop, Alex Rodriguez. Now it's Delgado at first with two out. And a check on Roland. Has a great arm. That ball hit the bat. And that's a good idea as to how good an arm Scott Roland has, the four time Gold Glove Award winner. But we have our first run of the game, driven in by Delgado, one to nothing, AL. The 2003 All-Star Game on Fox is brought to you by Bad Boys 2, starring Martin Lawrence and Will Smith in theaters July 18th, rated R. Beautiful night in Chicago, and Jamie Moyer takes over. Moyer has had an incredible turnaround in his career. Former Chicago Cub, pitching for Seattle, making big money. And a guy who's only the third player over the age of 40 to be a first time All Star. As Jim Edmonds steps in, Edmonds singled his first time up. Pujols and Bonds will follow. So a time for the left handed pitcher, Moyer. And that changeup misses low. One ball, one strike. As Joe said, 40 years old, he has won 117 games since turning 33. One ball, two strikes. Talk about a changeup from Clemens to Jamie Moyer, and I'm sure that as Mike Sosha laid out the game plan for this pitching rotation within this game, this is the time Sosha wanted the lefty with Edmonds and Bonds, two of the three hitters in the end, as the count goes two and two. Well, the interesting thing is Jamie Moyer is perhaps more effective against right-handed pitching. Or gets right handed hitting because that change up low and away the left hander takes the change up away from him until then until right now because he just struck out the leadoff fitter Edmonds is gone. Our game summary is brought to you by SWAT in theaters August 8th. We're in the top of the fourth inning only one hit for the National League a run on two hits for the AL the RBI belongs to Carlos Delgado for strong starts by Schmidt and Loiza. 97 RBIs in the first half for Delgado and one here already tonight. Here is Pujols and there's a ball into right field well hit. Back is Ichiro on the run a leap and a catch two out.
The reason that good outfielders, and boy, is he a good outfielder, makes a play like this is because of his jump. You see the end of it. What you don't see is the good jump that he had. He's been doing that for three years for Jamie Moyer and the Mariners. Here's Barry Bonds now with two out, nobody on. That misses ball one. Ichiro has made five errors in two and a half years since joining the Seattle Mariners. Rookie of the year, MVP in the American League in 2001, and defense is such a big part of that. One and one on Bonds. Missing, it's two and one. Bonds was jammed and he flied to right his first time up. His second at bat. You wonder if it's his last. Into right center field. Again, did not get the arms extended and staggering forward at the end is Matsui to end the inning. So another perfect inning for an American League pitcher. This time it's Moyer. Bonds is hitless, one nothing AL. Well, it is the bottom of the fourth inning in this All-Star game, and so far the only substitutions have been on the pitching mound. And that continues with Kerry Wood taking over for Wolf. They announce Wood, who obviously pitches for the Cubs, a season for Kerry Wood. Brings it home to Karen Anderson, and that 95 mile an hour fastball misses low, ball one. 1998 Rookie of the Year is Kerry Wood as Hasegawa and Mulder get loose. Ortiz getting loose for the National League. And Anderson lines one into right for a base hit. That pitch was up, and Garrett Anderson jumped on it. One on, nobody out. Edgar Martinez was hit by a pitch. It cracked his batting helmet. His first time up. You all right? It's in the best place, on the head. Probably hit me a Yeah, broke it or something. Did it break the helmet? Yes. That's Todd Helton, the first baseman for the National League, talking, and there's the crack. The helmet for Edgar Martinez. One on, nobody out. Martinez hammers strike one. See, Barry Larkin has the longest tenure with one team in the big leagues. That streak continues to this day, and Edgar Martinez, number two. No balls, one strike, one on, nobody out. And that's a strike on the outside corner. It's 0-2. Seattle Mariners just wrapped up a series with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Lou Pinella made his return to Safeco Field and Seattle, and nobody had nicer things to say about Sweet Lou than Edgar Martinez. That breaking ball missed the count one and two. Legally Blonde 3 is in the ballpark tonight. He is. <laughs> Lou said if the Tampa Bay Devil Rays win three in a row, I'll dye my hair blonde. That's setting your sights high. <laughs> Check on the runner, Anderson. You Obviously, think? Lou was a guy who wanted to dye his hair. I mean, <laughs> that's what I was you thinking. can't see yeah. through that charade. <laughs> if we have a lead some night after five innings, I'm dyeing my hair and getting my toes painted. <laughs> I don't care what you kids say. Got a great shot in the paper of Lou under a hair dryer. One-two pitch. Breaking ball struck him out, and Edgar Martinez is gone. That'll bring in Hideki Matsui, who singled his first time up. Matsui, nicknamed Godzilla, actually a nickname that he picked up in Japan his last year in high school. Mania over Matsui's arrival in New York. His face on a JAL airliner. Nine homers, 66 RBIs. And a guy who, after a hot start, went through a valley, a lot of ground outs. Started calling him Groundzilla instead of Godzilla in New York. And now the ball's back in the air. He's picking up hits. And he's hitting 387 since the first week of June. Good pitch down and in. No balls, two strikes from Kerry Wood. You had a shot at each row on the bench as this slider is really nasty. 
Matsui facing Wood when the Yankees played in Chicago for the first time since 1938. They have been teammates on All-Star games before three times in Japan. There's a foul ball and Tim I, I think you'll agree Steve Horn and I were talking about it that you have to give Matsui time to develop as a power hitter here as he makes the adjustments to pitches that he hasn't seen or quality of pitching he hasn't seen back in Japan. I, I think Matsui has said as much that he just hasn't that getting used to the pitching over here learning the pitchers is his toughest thing to do. No and balls it, two strikes and a little chopper to the second baseman Vidro who will tap the bag two out. Four shot, four unassisted. Matsui at first two out. Our Pepsi billionaire fan cam. This summer, Pepsi gives customers a chance to play for a billion dollars. A lot of the kids here in Chicago getting a chance to take in what is the seventh All-Star game played in this city. First one at Comiskey, then Wrigley Field in 47. Comiskey again in 1950. Red Shandies with a game winning home run in that game Wrigley in 62 Comiskey in 83 and then Wrigley in 1990 a two to nothing victory for the American League in a game that was wet it rained that night on the north side no balls one strike on Troy Gloss who struck out his first time one and one. I had the pleasure of doing that game in 1990 with your dad, the great one and only Jack Buck. We had uh, about an hour and 20 minute rain delay that night, won by the National League. I beg your pardon, the American League won that game 2-0. Uh, and that's when the country was introduced to Rescue 911, <laughs> a show on CBS. Right. Vernon Wells is taken over as a pinch runner at first base so we have our first position player substitution and Wells who at a very tender age of 24 is putting together a sensational season is back ahead of the tag so Matsui will end this first all star game one for two. Wow two balls two strikes. Can hear the pop of the mitt. We had a shot of some youngsters, and for all you youngsters watching in, uh, the great Branch Ricky used to talk about three little words: a good ball. Three little words. If you're a hitter, a good ball. What was he talking about? Get a good pitch to hit. There you go. He would restate it so much. Ultimately, you knew what he was talking about. I, I know. I just for the kids. I was a doing it for the kids. It. Here's a 2 2. Full count. Runner at first, Vernon Wells will go. First base coach Alfredo Griffin says, You got to run. It's 3 and 2, 2 out. That's what you do. That is strike three. You can hear Tim McClellan say strike three before that delayed call. And that's a two strikeout inning for Kerry Wood. Pitching dominating this one. One nothing AL after four. Magnificent overhead images of tonight's game and Chicago Illinois courtesy of Aquafina and the Aquafina Purity One light ship. Anytime you spot the Aquafina light ship you may be spotted for a chance to win your cash. Hasegawa takes over. He is the fourth pitcher of the night for the American League. And first up is Sheffield, who fouled out on a terrific catch by Delgado, the first baseman, back in the second. A ball, one strike from Hasegawa, who has a microscopic ERA. Vernon Wells stays in the game. Finch ran for Matsui, and now he's in center. Here's a 1-1. One -one. A lot of effort, 87 miles per hour that missed outside two and one. One base runner so far for the National League. Edmonds the only hit with one out in the first. Here's a two one. Three and one. Todd Helton on deck. 
11 straight have been retired by the combination of Louisa Clemens Boyer and now it's Hasegawa's turn one of the few middle slash setup relievers to be added to an all star pitching staff that is low for a lead off walk and for the first time tonight the National League has its lead off man on Todd Helton walk into the plate former quarterback at the University of Tennessee Pick the right sport. He can hit. One of the game's best pure hitters. Struck out his first time up. And he gets into one to center field. Back is Wells at the wall. It is gone. Home run, Helton, two to one. National League. Pitches that are up are bad pitches. But this looked like a hanging splitter right in the eyes of Helton, but not for long. So 11 straight, then a walk from Hasegawa, a two run home run. And ball one down and into rolling. Ooh. Between the belt and the letters. And with that ball between the mound and the plate, Helton started to smile. One ball, one strike. Hitters like the ball right there. So the National League jumps on top. And now Roland goes the opposite way, and that's going to get down for a hit. Ichiro will get it back in. Still nobody out. And we'll say again, Tim, what we said at the beginning. And it's very important looking at the pitching staffs for each team for the National League Dusty Baker has three guys down in his bullpen that are lights out automatic closers Gagne Wagner and Smoltz and he can turn this into a six inning game yeah your point uh, at uh, during the opening about six innings is exactly right we're in the fifth and these guys could come in seven eight and nine they have been close to unhittable all year Mark Mulder warming for the American League ball one outside to Javi Lopez I think Mulder is perhaps warming uh, for Jim Edmonds should he come to the plate now keep in mind that both teams when managers have to make decisions about who to put in the ball game it takes starting pitchers much longer to warm up as Dusty Baker reminded us before the game relievers work very quickly they warm up quickly, but starters take a lot longer. In fact, in an all-star game, if you could have three pitching rubbers down in that bullpen, you might at some time see three guys loosening up for the right situation and or the starting pitcher getting extra time to start an inning fresh. And in case you're wondering about Edmonds lurking, you now get the idea that Guardado will be the guy to come out of the bullpen because he's more used to it. As he starts to loosen and Hasegawa is in fifth inning trouble. Steady Eddie. Every day Eddie Guardado got up in a hurry. And when you pitch uh, as much as he does you can get loose very quickly and we may see him against Jose Vidro perhaps. A 2 0 pitch Lopez rips one foul down the left field line. And what a year Tim it's been for Javi Lopez. He was at a point early in the season when the Atlanta Braves picked up Johnny Estrada in the trade with the Philadelphia Phillies when they had to for payroll purposes get rid of Kevin Millwood who's been great for the Phillies. Estrada is the catcher of the future and they thought it might be as early as this season if they could get a taker for Lopez and now Javi Lopez is on a pace for a career high in home runs. He's hit 23 he's hitting 307. He's lost weight he's in better shape. And he is reaping the benefits as he takes a strike. It's two and two. He went from the open market to being indispensable for the Braves. Atlanta Braves leading the majors in home runs. Avi has 23. 2 2 pitch. Lopez into right center field. Wells going to get it. He can hit, and he's a good outfielder. One out. 
Well, our Saturday baseball will crank up again in just a few days. This week's Fox Saturday baseball returns when the Mets take on the Braves, and we understand it'll be Glavin against Hampton, or the Astros battle the Reds. Then the Cardinals square off with the Dodgers, or the A's meet the Twins. It all begins Saturday with this week in baseball at 12:30 Eastern and Pacific here on Fox. Here's Pedro, the number nine hitter. Big rip. Strike one. See what he does from the second base position with a bat. A switch hitter. Hits well into the 300s from both sides of the plate. Line drive hitter. 0 1 pitch. One ball, one strike. By the way, if you're wondering if you will see Barry Bonds against Steve Lyons informing us that Barry Bonds will hit one more time, at least one more time. So that means that Barry Bonds then informed Dusty Baker that he will hit one more time. That's right. There are many decisions that a manager has to make, especially in an all-star game. But when it comes to somebody like Bonds and his relationship with Baker, Dusty asked him if he wanted to play left field or DH. Bonds said, I want a DH. And Bonds will also dictate how many times he comes to the plate. Pedro fouls it, two balls, two strikes. In Dusty's words, he's earned that right. Dusty also said, Bond said, well, you never gave me that option when I played for you. <laughs> In early play, he had that opportunity, but tonight he got his pick, and DH was the call. 2-2 to Pedro is on the inside corner, two out. So Hasegawa trying to salvage this inning. After a walk, a home run, and a single. Sometimes if you get to two strikes with off-speed stuff, it's good to polish off hitters with inside fastballs because they protect away. Nice pitch selection by Hasegawa. And a guy who's working with Jorge Posada for the first time. Here's Fercal pinch hitting. Renneria 0 for 2 while he was in there, and Rafael Fercal has been amazing with the bat this season his average has cooled it has dropped but power wise this guy has been phenomenal he's hit four lead off home runs in a game and he's hit 13 home runs on the season the count goes to two and up. Oh. How about the Atlanta Braves this season Tim they're doing it with average pitching and an offense that just Lights up a scoreboard. Very good defense buoyed by Percal at shortstop. That sliced foul. Two balls to strike. Marcus Giles. A voted as a starter, but because of that collision we showed you earlier last Friday with Mark Pryor of the Cubs. His place was taken by Bidro. It's, it's just a. Uh, it's a staggering turnaround for the Braves. Not their success, but the, the way they're successful. Doing it with offense. Burkow floats one into center. That's a base hit. And now we may see a move by Mike Sosha with Guardado in the bullpen. The lefty Edmonds coming up. And here comes Sosha. He's going to go to the bullpen. He wants the inning to end here with Edmonds with Pujols lurking on deck. There's the song I love. Guardado coming in takes over it's worth pointing out that because we didn't see our first position player substitution until the fourth inning position players there are more of them on the bench and now as managers make matchup pitching changes like Sosha going with Guardado to deal with Jim Edmonds now Jones is still sitting on the bench as opposed to in the lineup after two at bats and he can come out and pinch it yeah, against that, Guardado. That is a point well taken. So Andrew Jones, a right-handed batter, faces Eddie Guardado with two on, two out. And we see matchups here in the fifth inning, which is something Mike Sosha anticipated. He thought he would use Guardado, who is typically a closer, in the middle innings. Every day, Eddie. That is fair down the left field line. Roland will come home to score. Garrett Anderson, they're going to call interference down there by a fan reaching over. A ground rule double, and that's a break for the American League. Fan interference. It'll be a double. And we'll see as Dusty Baker comes out to argue. Now Tim McClellan says we, as the umpires, are going to award home plate. Yeah, I, I was going to say, on a ground rule double, 
If a runner is on at first base and the umpires determined that his speed will score the run, had the fan not touched the ball, they can award the runner first base. Now clearly, for Kahl, one of the fastest guys in the major leagues, scampering around third. Well, then I'm going to change my mind. What looked to be a break for the American League, and Mike Stosia is saying the same thing. This is in the umpire's judgment that they're going to give home plate to the trail runner for Kyle. And as you saw Garrett Anderson pick that ball up, for Kyle was just tapping the third base back. Yeah, but he never, uh, in my view, they never get for Kyle. He's too fast. Garrett Anderson, a left handed thrower, has to turn around to make the throw to the pivot man. For Kyle had too much of a head of steam the way I see it. And, uh, I agree with the umpires right here. So we see a rare argument yeah. from a manager, Sosha coming out arguing with Tim McClellan. And I will come down on the side of Mike Sosha. Okay. In fact, I said that for Kyle was tapping the third base back. Anderson, when he saw the fan reach over, really kind of gave up on the ball. And when that happened down the left field line, for Kyle wasn't even at the third base back. But he could fly. And I, I think they they took that into consideration. All the things that Anderson, it was very close, but all the thing that it, things that Anderson had to do to get for a call. Ball right inside the bag. There's the ball right there. For a call, as Joe said, is yet to get to the third base bag. But he had a head of steam. Now think about all the things that Garrett Anderson has to do. Now he could make the play. There was a chance that he throws him out with the relay throw home. But the way I saw it for Kyle scores. So that's the way Tim McClelland, who is the crew chief of this group, saw it. He awarded immediately home plate. And now Pujols hits one into left field. Here comes Andrew Jones, no doubt on this, and it's 5-1 National League. Albert Pujols, who has 86 RBIs during the regular season, took a pitch that was up, lined it under the glove of Gloss for another two-out RBI hit. Looked like a high slider from Guardado. Ooh, that is right in the wheelhouse of Albert Pujols. <laughs> Thing about Pujols that's startling, and all the players talk about it. Not only does he have, you can see Guardano saying that ball was high. Now it's Bonds at the plate, one on, two out. But he can he has such great plate coverage, just like Barry Bonds. Ninth man to bat in the inning, third at bat for Barry Bonds, one on, two out. And Bonds is 0 for 3. Delgado taps the bag, and that's it. In the inning, the first run scoring on a home run by Todd Help. He's hit 21 during the regular season. The National League jumps out in front with a five-run fifth. It's five to one. Aquafina and the crew of the Aquafina Purity One Light Ship are proud to be a part of tonight's game coverage. We hope you're enjoying this pure view from high in the sky. You saw the score. It's five to one National League with a five-run fifth inning. Changes all over the place for the National League, and that includes. The man on the mound as Posada stands in. 0 for 1. Russ Ortiz, who pitched for Dusty Baker, now the manager of the Cubs, last year when both were with San Francisco, finds a strike. Away we go. We've got Richie Sexton at first base. Luis Castillo, a late addition. He's at second base. Rafael Fercal stays in the game at short after pinch hitting for Renteria. There's a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Over at third base, it's Mike Lowell. What a year he's having for the Marlins. He's off the market. Luis Gonzalez is in the game in left. Andrew Jones stays in in center. And over in right, it's Preston Wilson. Lopez is still catching as Posada flares one foul. And you would have to assume, although we won't know until the next time the spot comes up, that Barry Bonds is probably finished as the DH after going 0 for 3 at the plate. I think one of the big reasons Javi Lopez is still catching is because of Russ Ortiz. The Braves starter with 12 wins this year. Traded from San Francisco and what a job he's done for Bobby Cox and Leo Mazzoni down in Atlanta. Gary Wood went one inning. 
one hit two strikeouts and now it's Ortiz the fourth pitcher of the evening for the National League. So the American League down by four runs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. One two pitch two and two. Woody Williams is getting loose. Brought 30 family and friends with him to this all star game at U.S. Cellular Field. Is that right? 30. 30. A 2 2 pitch. A strikeout starts the night for Russ Ortiz. And let's check in with Steve Lyons, who's standing by with Todd Help. All right, Joe, Todd got things started in the fifth inning for the National League with the two run homer. And you guys take a lot of heat, you, Preston Wilson, Larry Walker, about the rare air that up there in Colorado. But nothing too cheap about a home run dead central in this ballpark. No, not at all. The ball flies uh, pretty good here, but uh, we do take a lot of heat, but we feel we can hit anywhere uh, against any pitcher, and uh, we, we take that approach on the road, and that's been working a little bit uh, for us lately. Do you guys feel, as, as your National League club looks at things right now, with the guys you have in the pen, with Smoltz and Wagner and Gagne, this game turns into a seven-inning game when you put five runs up in the fifth inning like that? Uh, nobody wants to face those guys. They are filthy, and uh, we, we felt, uh, we talked about it in the clubhouse, and we could just get a lead that uh, things were going to work out pretty well for us. How much fun is it that you don't have to face them today? Exactly. I'll we'll, we'll let the American League uh, worry about them today. All right, Todd, thank you very much. Joe Spock, back to you. All right, Steve, thanks. Thanks to Todd Helton. Congratulations to Todd Helton, who hits a home run and now gets to sit and watch the rest of this one with you. Here's a 2-0 pitch. That is on the outside corner. Another at bat for Ichiro, his third plate appearance of the night, with Soriano on deck. Delgado, if anybody gets on. 5 to 1 National League, fifth inning. 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. Here's what it looked like. Started the scoring for the National League. It's in the inning by Helton, Roland, for Kyle, Andrew Jones. And Albert Pujols, 3-1 pitch. You can see Ichiro trying to do something with that pitch, just chopping it over to the left side. The count's full three and two. He never becomes overly enamored with power, particularly with two strikes. Those high choppers to the left side, he outruns the ball. He's running when he hits it. 3-8, that's his time down to the first base back. Can go down to first on ball four. One on, one out. Wanda Sykes is at the ballpark, one of our first mega stars that joins us here at U.S. Cellular Field. All right, Wanda. On Fridays. On Fox, you have to believe that Jim Belushi is somewhere here. You have to believe that Bill Murray is here. Both from Chicago, Second City. Both. It's anything but Second City, this town. Both Cubs fans. One on, one out, Soriano. Takes up and away from Russ Ortiz. Soriano is struck out and fly to center. So who will bridge the gap for the National League to that three-headed monster down in their bullpen. Steve Lyons and Todd Helton both talking about it, reinforcing your point earlier. Five outs before the National League gets to the seventh inning. So it's Ortiz now with Woody Williams getting loose for the sixth. One on, one out. Soriano with a good swing, one and one. Dusty Baker has this group which to choose down the stretch in this game. Look at the opponent's average that Tim marks. Gagne is just sensational with three pitches he can throw for strikes. And all three complement one another. A left-handed fireballer, a right-handed fireballer, and then Gagne with a great change up and off-speed stuff. Runner at first, one out. Russ Ortiz dealing with Soriano. That's not well hit into right center field, and Preston Wilson will come get it. Two out. Soriano, who's that rare combination of power and speed, is 0 for 3. 
Carlos Delgado who has the only RBI of the night for the American League walks in. <laughs> Schmidt Wolf Kerry Wood Russ Ortiz the pitchers tonight for the National League. See some of the stars that are still on the bench for the AL Mike Giambi Garcia Parra Dusty Baker emptied his dugout a moment ago wouldn't say this game is out of reach the way this pitching has been you get that feeling and with what's lurking in the bullpen as opposed to a 2 1 game or a 3 1 game it's 5 to 1 which may have made it a little easier for Dusty Baker to push some of those guys out of the dugout to make substitutions. Elgato 2 and 0. By the way, if the National League wins, they would have gotten home field advantage in the World Series this year anyway. So this just in. <laughs> Whoever wins the World Series, that will determine home field advantage for the All-Star game next no, year. No, no, it doesn't <laughs> work that way. Ichiro is ceiling and Delgado fouls it back. So you're now trying to make more changes. I was only kidding. Whoever wins a World Series, that league gets home field advantage in the All-Star game. Next year's All-Star game will be played in Houston. Well, they alternate every year. Yeah, right. ALNL. Delgado with a count of two and one. What a rip. It's two and two. So strong. Got in on him just a wee bit. You can see Lopez sitting inside. That's where American League pitchers try to pitch Delgado inside. Most power hitters you try to crowd. One on two out two balls two strikes Delgado took low for ball three. Mark Mulder warming up a moment ago. Likely the next pitcher for the American League as their bullpen is quiet at the moment. Runner at first Ichiro will go. Three two. Chased it. Delgado strikes out two strikeouts in the inning for Ortiz and the American League strands its fifth runner we go to the sixth NL on top by four first pitch of the sixth inning from Mark Mulder is in for a strike Preston Wilson is first at bat of the night took over for Gary Sheffield so far the changes appear to be straight up Wilson now then Sexton then Lowell the three hitters in this inning for the National League they lead it by four. One one delivery from the lefty Mulder is a good fastball right down the middle one and two. Talk about a three headed monster for the National League in their bullpen the. Oakland A's have it in their starting rotation. Mulder's part of it with Barry Zito the other left hander. And of course Tim Hudson. The catcher for the A's is Ramon Hernandez and he's behind the plate. Catching the 12 game winner. Up the middle. Alex Rodriguez under his glove and a leadoff base hit for Preston Wilson. Just out of the reach of A Rod. Yeah, Mike Socia telling us before the game that he was going to try to match Posada to at least catch Roger Clemens and then bring Hernandez in to catch Mark Mulder Mulder by the way is a local product from Chicago went to Michigan State and is the winningest pitcher in baseball over the last three years 52 wins a big body of Richie Sexton is out of the way six eight is Sexton you see Rodriguez making that dive to his left three at bats that's what Sosha said coming in. And that's what Associate appears is sticking with. 
in this four run game we're in the sixth inning already and still on the bench is a name like Garcia Parra for the American League Maglio Ordonez Veritek Blaylock Everett that's too far inside two balls and a strike on Sexton. you mentioned Hank Blaylock of the Texas Rangers and Socia pointing out that the American League only carries two third basemen. So putting Blaylock at third prematurely that could be countered by Dusty Baker bringing in a short reliever like Billy Wagner late in the game. Preston Wilson was jumping around over at first base. So Mulder stepped off two balls and a strike on Sexton. Twenty five home runs on the year and that's a double play ball. Combination of A-Rod, Boone, and now Giambi on a tag. Two out. So with the bases empty, we'll tell you for the first time, fans around the world will have the opportunity to participate in the official voting for the Ted Williams Most Valuable Player in tonight's All-Star Game via the 2003 All-Star Game MVP vote presented by Pepsi on MLB.com. The online vote will count for 20% of the overall vote. Here's Lowell with the bases empty two out. Boy did it change some pennant races and I think no more than the Central Division in the National League when the Florida Marlins said Mike Lowell was off the trading market for the rest of this season. In fact the Marlins went out and added Uget Urbina. Tony La Russa with the Cardinals. I'm sure Jimmy Williams with the Astros fearful of the Cubs with their terrific pitching adding a bat and a presence like Lowell at third base which is a hole for them right now on their ball club. But Mike is at the plate with his 28 home runs already a career high and his 76 RBI. Fastball is I guess high and tight two and two. Florida Marlins seem to be doing the opposite this year of what they did in 1997 by adding Urbina. Of course, they won the world championship in 97, escalating salaries. So, on a smaller scale, by getting Urbina, that took Lowell off the market. Still working to try and get the fans back after yeah. that yeah. taste was left in their mouths seeing their world championship team demolished. That's down the right field line. That ball is down fair. It'll take a hop. And it is a ground rule double with two out, a runner at second. And Loduca will come up and pinch hit. Here is Mike Lowell talking about his comeback battle with cancer. Once I was educated on what type of cancer I had, how curable it was, then I started feeling better that this could be beat. Then I think I took it to the next step. That now once I went through all the treatments and everything, I'm not going to give up on what I wanted to do since I was six years old. Testicular cancer battled his way back. And here he is, an all-star, and one of clearly the best players in the league is that line drive is at least kept on the infield by the glove of Mulder. And that may have saved a run. A floating line drive off the bat of Paul Loduca, who was pinch hitting for Javi Lopez. And that big body and that outstretched glove of Mulder kept it on the infield. Yeah, I think uh, I think it got in a little bit on Loduca, but when balls are hit on a line back to the mound, your first reaction is it's hit hard. So you defend yourself and protect yourself on a ball hit hard, and often you'll see a ball go off the the heel of the glove, the webbing of the glove, and an infield hit for Laduca. Now first and third with two out. And Castillo, the addition to this National League club, taking over for the injured Giles, the second baseman, when he couldn't play because of the concussion, took a ball. There's a strike, and it's one and one. With a guy like Castillo and his speed, with a runner on at third base and two outs, it makes him doubly dangerous because he can beat out an infield hit. He leads the majors in infield hits over the last three years. And he chops one back to Mulder. The inning comes to a close. So three hits in the inning for the National League. 
but a double play ball mixed in. Two left, three on the day, and we go to the bottom of the sixth, 5-1 NL. And this could be last chance cafe for the American League. When you think of the weapons that Dusty Baker has down in his bullpen at his disposal with Smoltz, Gagne, and Wagner. That's off the end of the bat. Out of play, one ball, one strike. Woody Williams, a 12-game winner, the ace of the Cardinals staff, an ERA of 3.01, and he has been sensational since the Cardinals picked him up a couple of seasons ago from the Padres. That's too far outside. It's two and one. Picked him up in August of 2001 for Ray Lankford. A Rod has struck out and grounded the third. Right down the middle, two and two. Our sprint virtual manager question who will break Henry Aaron's career home run record? Bonds, Rodriguez, someone else, or nobody? And you voted. The answer, Bonds. Reaching for it is Rodriguez for Kyle. A spin, a throw, and he throws it into the dugout. He's made 21 errors during the regular season. He wheeled. He has a great arm. And somebody just got a wake-up call in that National League dugout after this. Sometimes errors are the result of range. A guy who a lot of guys would not normally get to a ball like this, but for Kyle with a lot of confidence in that throwing arm the pirouette at second and he gets under the throw and fires it into the National League dugout. Steve Lyons is down in that dugout. Uh, Steve you OK down there. <laughs> well, yeah I'm OK but you know uh, Mark Pryor's got a target on his back over this last week. He ran into Marcus Giles earlier in a ball game and he was the one that was directly in line to be hit with that errant throw and it was a bullet I'll tell you. Here is Garrett Anderson who's one for two so Anderson is third at bat. Runner at second with nobody out. It's a base hit and an error. Single for Rodriguez, E6. And Anderson gets into one into right center field. Garrett Anderson has Homer. A two run shot, and it's 5 3. Derby last night and he gets one here in the sixth inning. Garrett Anderson with a no doubt in the right center field. You may remember the ball Todd Helton hit to open the fifth inning for the National League. That ball was about the same height right between the letters and the belt. Second time All-Star gets his first home run and it was crunched. Mike Socia said Garrett Anderson has a flat swing, and it was a compliment. Here's the error that opened things up for the American League to score. And they did not waste any time taking advantage of the error, the throwing error by Percal. Edgar Martinez, one ball, one strike, trying to go the other way. It's one and two. Nobody loosening for the National League in their bullpen. 12 game winner Woody Williams gives up a hit and a home run. A lot of characteristics make a major league player. I don't think there's a smoother player on either team than Anderson. Two balls, two strikes. He's one of those guys that is a big leaguer because of him being so smooth. And it sometimes looks effortless that people say, well, he just doesn't care. Yeah, He's not yeah. really into the yeah. game. Which is an unfair assessment as Martinez strikes out one away. Edgar Martinez, 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. The game looks difficult to play for some players. It does not look difficult to play for Garrett Anderson. It's now Vernon Wells, his first at bat, Matsui, while he was in there in the seventh spot, 1 for 2. Wells takes the ball outside. Vernon Wells should be regarded as one of the game's best young players as he hits one into center field. Back is Andrew Jones. Tough to get it out of here to center. And that's out number two. They say the ball just dies in center field here at U.S. Cellular. 
Well, if you hit it over Andrew Jones's head, you better get it out of here. Otherwise, it's going to be caught before it hits the ground. We were in the clubhouse, the American League clubhouse, or the National League clubhouse before the game. And I asked uh, Andrew, I said, uh, uh, have you always played so shallow? He said, I played more shallow with low ball pitchers. Breaking balls popped up to the right side. Sexton back to get it. And after the home run, three in a row retires. And deeper for high ball pitchers. That was high, and he caught it. So the American League closes it down. A hit, an error, a blast. It's 5-3 after six. Back after this from your local Fox station. And gave up three hits in the sixth. For Cal, one for one with a single run scored when he pinch hit for Renteria in the fifth. Reaching for it, it's 0-2. Nomar Garcia Parra takes over at short for A Rod. Rodriguez, while he was in there, one out of three. Top of the order for the National League. Mercal took a ball inside, one and two. You can see that little motion with the Ramon Hernandez with his mitt saying, keep that ball up. It's the value of having your own catcher in the All Star game. A strikeout, the first of the night for Mulder. Let's go down to Steve Lyons with Tony LaRusso. All right, Joe, Tony's managed three of these games and has now coached in three of these games. Joe and Tim have been talking about how this game certainly feels different now that it counts. Talk to us about how it's being managed differently. Well, I think most of it has to do with uh, the personalities and the philosophies of Dusty and Mike. I mean, these guys are competitors, they're winners. A year ago against them in spring training. I mean, they, they don't want to lose. And I think both of them are really talking about the pride of the league. I do think home field is an extra edge, but I think if you're playing this thing with nobody watching, these two guys are going to manage it hard. And certainly puts a little more pressure on the manager. Were you yourself in favor of the change to have a home field advantage be determined by this game? Yeah, I'm not sure if I think home field is a significant advantage. I'm not sure if winning the All-Star game is the best way, but anything that adds to the competition feel, the competitive feel here, is really good and it helps the manager because they're trying to promote this get serious that this is not an exhibition. I know you're never afraid to protect your players, but when was the last time in an All-Star game you saw a manager come out and argue a play like Sosa did? Well, that's a good example. You know, Mike, I mean, he wants to win this game and I guarantee if it's been vice versa, Dusty would be out there. I mean, these two guys are great competitors. I think it adds a lot to the, the flavor of this game. All right, Tony, thank you very much. Joe, Tim? Steve, thanks, and thanks to Tony LaRusa. Remember last year when Tony La Russa and Dusty Baker got into a mini war of words during the NLCS and I think as a gesture of goodwill as you look at Sosha talking to Tim McClellan about that play when they awarded for Kyle home plate on that ball with the spectator interference down the left field line. Dusty Baker wanted Tony La Russa on his staff as Andrew Jones reaches gets it hits it goodbye home run Andrew Jones and it's six three National League. Impressive piece of hitting by Andrew Jones. Andrew Jones hitting a ball where even he couldn't catch it. While watching him take, uh, I'm going to take batting practice tonight, Joe. I don't think any player on either side can hook the ball into that left center field gap any better than Andrew Jones. The reason for that, I believe, his arms are so long and he can reach balls outside off the plate that most guys can't get to. So Jones goes deep. Now it's Gonzalez with one out, nobody on. See this pitch right here? Nope. I thought it was a little farther out than, than that. Uh, a laser by Jones. Still reaching for it and still almost down on a knee when he was, when he made contact. And the ball just carried, carried, carried. Just down a little out of a crouch and Andrew Jones I still think you have to ask the question is he going to take that next step and be one of the game superstars as that's on the inside corner one and two. Here's a guy who burst onto the national scene in 1996 with those two home runs in game one of the World Series. He's been in the spotlight since hitting those home runs as a 19 year old for seven years now. He's still not really the top build athlete on his own team. I think Sheffield or Chipper Jones would take that on. Well, he's a superstar on defense, but he's got a lot of holes on offense. Holds the bat down to, uh, right on the knob. 
and balls away out of the strike zone have given him problems as Brendan Donnelly of the Angels is warming for the American League. So Luis Gonzalez, who was at the plate his first time at the plate, the Arizona Diamondback, gets a base hit through the right side off the lefty Mulder. And now Rondell White grounds one to the shortstop, Garcia Parra. Step, throw, inning over. But not before the National League adds to its lead. Andrew Jones with a home run on a line into the bleachers in left center field. It is 6-3 NL. Time to stretch and time for God Bless America to be performed tonight by recording artist Amy Grant. As this game moves into the bottom of the seventh, Fred Boone will step to the plate for the first time. And he will be dealing with Billy Wagner. All 5'11", 195 pounds of Billy Wagner, who has big legs, gets a lot of drive from those legs, and can throw the ball in triple digits with regard to his velocity. Boone is jammed, and he pops it into right for Preston Wilson. For the AL, their leadoff man is gone here in the seventh. The mantra for the American League right now should be, all right, all you fastball hitters, and here's a good fastball hitter. But against Billy Wagner, you've got to keep the ball down. The hometown favorite coming up. And a nice moment and a great ovation from these White Sox fans. They appreciate the kind of season Ordonez has had, the kind of career he has had. And ball one inside. Billy Wagner drives him off the plate. to the right side. Is it playable for Sexton? Looks like it. Two up, two down. Two weak fly balls to the right side. And the bases are empty after the four-time All-Star Ordonez fouls out. I think you can make a case that Billy Wagner throws harder than anybody in the game. He has struck out more per nine innings. Now, remember, he's a short reliever, but more per nine innings than any pitcher in the history of the game. And what's amazing is... He was first a right-hander. Right. Broke his arm a couple of times. How about that? So he said, I'll start throwing the ball left-handed. And to think of the athletic ability, as Giambi says athletic ability, goodbye. Home run, Jason Giambi. Lefty on lefty, and Giambi goes deep to make it a two-run game. Billy Wagner has not turned to watch a ball hit like that against him very often. Seemed to be a quick head turn. A man could hurt his neck turning it that quick. That's right. Now it's Ramon Hernandez, the catcher in the lineup, batting in the number three spot. It's a 6-4 game. In the blink of an eye, I don't think he even turned. When a pitcher doesn't turn, he knows it. I don't think he turned his head. 2-0 and oh on Ramon Hernandez. It was a slow turn. Belatedly. That's a disgusted turn. A 2 0 pinch to Ramon Hernandez. Kind of an Iron Man behind the plate for Oakland and a guy who offensively has taken it up a notch after a so so year last year. Two balls and a strike, two out, nobody on, a run home now three and one with Nomar Garcia Parra on deck. Garcia Parra, a lethal fastball hitter. Wagner has to give Hernandez something to hit, and he does to third. A high hop for Lowell, and the throw across in plenty of time. In the inning, two quick outs, and then wham, Jason Giambi. First pitch from Billy Wagner. Get by 6-4 after 7. Country music, you think of Tim McGraw, and I know that makes you, Tim, think of your 
dear friend Tug McGraw. Uh, Tug McGraw uh, going into the Moffitt Cancer uh, Treatment Center in Tampa, Florida today. And I was at the Phillies home opener back in April. And the day after the home opener, I went to a Tim McGraw concert across the street at the Spectrum, the last year of Veterans Stadium this year. And after singing two songs, Tim McGraw said, this is how he introduced himself. I'm Tug McGraw's son. And the concert ended showing Tug McGraw striking out Willie Wilson and the only time the Philadelphia Phillies have won a world championship. And the place went crazy. Went crazy. A 1 1 to Preston Wilson. Fouled back here again, 1 and 2. As far as we know, the Rum Tum Tugger's doing fine. Good reports as you look at Maglio Ordonez taking over and right. Good reports after that frightening original diagnosis that happened during spring training. No balls, two strikes. Preston Wilson out of the way of a pitch from Brendan Donnelly, the right hander with a 0.38 ERA setting up for the Angels in 40 games. He gave up no earned runs in, in April, one in May, and one in June. <laughs> the one-two pitch, another foul. Otherworldly. At the break, the lowest since Bill Landrum, Pittsburgh Pirate. 1989. One ball, two strikes. Wilson strikes out. Good pitch down and away. Let's go back to 1980. World Series Game 6, October 21st. And here's the highlight that was played at the end of that concert. There's Willie Wilson at the plate. And the two time All Star, Tug McGraw. His arms in the air, that famous look. The leap by Mike Schmidt and the celebration at the bet. With one out, nobody on. Here's Sexton. First pitch called ball one. Sexton bounced into a double play his first time up. 6 4 as Donnelly tries to keep it that way. The American League in the bottom of this eighth will have Garcia Parra. To start it, then Garrett Anderson, who's still in the game. Edgar Martinez is the DH due up third. 2 0 on Sexton. So with Aaron Boone on deck, we've seen Dusty Baker go through that bench a little quicker than Mike Socia has in the American League side. 2 0 pitch. That's popped up into right. Ordonez knows how to play that spot. Two out. With the bases empty, Aaron Boone will bat for Mike Lowell. The Major League Baseball All-Star Game trading card sweepstakes winning code is 4YLWW4KW. Subject to verification. This winner receives a trip for eight to game one of the 2003 World Series, including round trip air and ground transportation and hotel accommodations. Where will game one of the 2003 World Series be? In an American League city or a National League city? National League on top, trying to determine that. 6-4 here in the top of the eighth, and a strike and a foul to Aaron Boone, who not only gets a chance to hit here, but will take over at third and add to the defensive strength of the National League in the bottom of this eighth. hit on a line but right at Ordonez. So Aaron Boone in the game. Brett Boone at second base for the American League. Bob Boone is dad in the crowd along with their grandfather Ray Boone. And great grandson Jake. Four years old and the son of Brett. Six of the aerial coverage of tonight's game is courtesy of the Aquafina Purity One light ship. With a little pure luck you could be spotted by the light ship for a chance to win pure cash and pure filth is how you would describe Eric Gagne. This guy gets my vote as the nastiest coming out of either bullpen. He throws three pitches all for strikes, he says, as Gagne bounces a 57-footer to the backstop. 
He is 31 for 31 in save opportunities and Aaron Boone does stay in the game. He's at third. First up is Garcia Parra first at bat and a little fastball to make it one and one. I think it's such an interesting comparison Joe between Gagne and John Smoltz both superb relievers and they do it differently. One and two. But as far as making you look foolish which in many eyes are the the reason that a, a short reliever is a quality reliever Gagne can do it with the best of them. Fastball just missed it's two and two. He can freeze you with the fastball he can make you get out front with the all speed stuff. The guy who was a failed starter was actually shopped around by the Dodgers. No takers and the Dodgers fell into and lucked into. I mean, to say one of the game's best. The guy's perfect and save opportunities this season. Last year his first crack at it didn't have a save in his professional career. Saved 52 games. 2 2 pitch. Reaching for it. For Cobb. Goes off that good arm and Garcia Parra is 0 for 1 tonight. Those are the types of swings on which Gagne retires hitters. Nomar Garcia Parra led the league, the American League, in 99 and 2000. And to make him look that badly with the rear end out, little poke shot towards short, that's how Gagne does it. Well, the bench for Dusty Baker, the National League manager, is Garrett Anderson gets another base hit. That ball is going to get down and roll all the way to the wall. Anderson will cruise into second with a one out double and Anderson is three for four lacking only a triple to hit for the cycle. Single in the fourth homered in the sixth and doubles with one out in the eighth as Garrett Anderson cruises into second Preston Wilson slides into the right field wall. Watch Wilson trying to make that play before the ball hit the wall and carry him back trying to time it appropriately. So now the AL with a chance to do some damage potential tying run at the plate as Melvin Bora will be the pinch runner for Garrett Anderson and what a night for Garrett. Huge night for Anderson. Melvin Mora takes over so it took the eighth inning coming into this eighth. Sosha still had Blaylock. Veritek, Dimitri Young, Everett, and Mora on his bench. Baker has only Jeff Jenkins. As a strike is in at the knees to Carl Everett, who started this season with the Texas Rangers. And off to a slow start in his new uniform with the Chicago White Sox. Way out in front. And it's quickly 0-2. Again, the Gagne changeup. Everett hitting 243 in 11 games with one RBI for the White Sox. White Sox started to get hot. They added Roberto Alomar. They've added Carl Everett. Their pitching needs some help. Everett just a defensive swing. There's an all-star with a slap at you swing. You can see that finger. That was the last pitch, that curveball that missed outside. That is the middle finger of Gagne. But he even grips the ball like it's going to be a changeup. All four fingers. One, two pitch. Everett stays alive. You think about the White Sox. They will start the second half seven games out behind the surprising Kansas City Royals. And what a job by Tony Pena the Royals manager they are 10 games over the 500 mark. one two pitch Everett grounds one to first the hop comes up for Sexton two out Kansas City started off the season winning 16 of their first 18 games and then they went into a spin and everybody was thinking oh well they'll probably fall out of it but to their credit they have bounced back and played as well over the last month three weeks to a month as any team in the American League. Mike Sweeney who has neck and back trouble will not be ready when the curtain comes up on the second half on Thursday. Vernon Wells now with a runner at third two out. Wells is 0 for 1. 
During the regular season, he's hitting 299 with 84 RBIs. One and one. Tying run at the plate for the American League here in the eighth. That ball almost with screwball spin. That's into left center field, and it's a one-run game. Morris scores as Vernon Wells, the tying run, will cruise into second with a two-out RBI double. Some of you folks are getting an idea of why major league hitters love the ball up. We saw the home run by Helton, by Anderson on balls up, and now Vernon Wells between the belt and the letters. Rifles one to left center field to make it a run, one run ball game. And as you look at the way this game has been managed by Mike Sosha, now he's got Blaylock so good against right handed pitching to pinch it here with a tying run at second base. Ball one. Mike Sosha thought about these matchups coming in. He's held guys on the bench. He hasn't worried about trying to make friends on his own bench. And he's had the ability here in the late innings to get his matchups. That includes Blaylock, who takes ball two. 349 against right handed pitching is Blaylock. With Gagne on the mound, Blaylock is the man at the plate for the American League. Two and one. It's like a 2 0 changeup. It was. On deck is the number nine hitter, Brett Boone. 6 5 in the eighth. Laylock almost walked into it. It's three and one. Two one fastball inside. So if Gagne threw Hank a 2 0 changeup, he'll get it again. And he lifts one into deep right center field. The American League is on top in the eighth. Laylock a pinch hit, two run home run. takes a tailing pitch for a strike. There's a strike. It's 0-2. You talked about it earlier. Mike Sosha telling us before the game he couldn't take Gloss out too soon. He wanted to save Blaylock, his only other third baseman, for the right spot. And Mike it, Sosha picked the right spot. And if it puts Laylock in too quickly, then Wagner pitches against him instead of Gagne as the American League takes the lead again. The Texas Rangers represented by second-year player Hank Blaylock, a hero in the eighth, 7-6 AL. Hank Blaylock with a two-out, two-run shot. And all of a sudden, the American League is out in front. We're in the ninth inning. It's 7-6 AL. And it's Keith Folt, former closer for the White Sox, on the mound representing Oakland. And the first pitch, Loduca swinging a miss. Only Jeff Jenkins remains on the bench for the National League and Dusty Baker. Keith Folt, very familiar with the mound here in Chicago. He was with the White Sox last year. That's out of play 0-2. Going to Oakland in the Billy Koch trade, a trade that involves six players. Melvin Mora takes over in left field. He can play just about anywhere. He's in left field after pinch running for Garrett Anderson, who's got a shot at being the MVP of this game. 0-2 pitch. Another foul, Tim. We talked about Gagne being Mr. Automatic. 31 for 31 in save chances this year it would go down as a blown save, even though it happened in the eighth inning. The last blown save for Gagne was August 26, 2002. 
He had saved 39 straight. And as it happened, Blaylock became the 12th player to hit a home run in his first All-Star at bat since Javi Lopez did it in 97. That's into shallow center field and easy for Vernon Wells. One out here in the ninth. For the first time, fans around the world will have the opportunity to participate in the official voting for the Ted Williams Most Valuable Player at tonight's All-Star Game via the 2003 All-Star Game MVP vote presented by Pepsi on MLB.com. Let's go down and check in with Kevin Kennedy. You know, that MVP of this game could very well be Garrett Anderson. He's had a great night, a home run double single. Last night, he wins a home run derby. You didn't get worn out last night? Yeah, I got a little worn out <laughs> last night. I mean, swing after swing after swing, trying to hit him up in the seats. He definitely is taxing on the body. What did Mike Socha tell you guys before the game? Because it's been a different feel down here in the dugout than, than I've had in the past. Well, I mean, you know, it's, anytime you get between the lines, you, you're going to want to do well. And uh, I think just um, the mentality of, you know, more of strategizing the game might might make guys get a little bit more into the game, so to speak, as opposed to, you know, maybe, you know, you're going to get to a bats and you're done, predetermined. So, you know, he didn't tell us when we were coming out, and we just went out and played. You're a great night for you tonight. Congratulations on last night. We'll see what happens tonight. you got a shot at the MVP. All right, Joe? Staying in the game, getting four at bats, making good in three of them. And now Castillo flies one to center. And the American League is one out away from the victory. They lead 7-6, two out, nobody on in the ninth inning. Tonight's All-State good hands defensive play of the game. The play by Carlos Delgado. Way back in the second inning to take the bat out of the hands of Gary Sheffield. And then the play by Ichiro. The American League flashing some leather as he took a double away from Pujols. Now it's for Kyle. And it's ball one that misses outside from Keith Folk. For Kyle is one for two since entering in the fifth inning. 13 home runs for the diminutive shortstop. It's crowd on its feet. It's 2 and 0. Oh. This is the largest crowd ever at what is now called U.S. Cellular Field since the park opened in 91. 47,000. 609. Nobody is left. Everybody on their feet watching a 2-0 pitch to Fercal. 3-0. On deck is Andrew Jones. Andrew Jones tonight has had a big night with a two-run double and a home run. A 3-0 from Folk. 3-1. We'll see if for Kyle's taking on three and one. Mike Socia moving Jason Giambi back at first base. One strike away is the American League from a come from behind victory. If the AL wins, the league will have home field advantage in the World Series come October. For Kyle gets into one to right. Back at the track, at the wall. This game is over. 7 6 American League. They say the ball does not carry all that well in this stadium. And for Kyle is a believer now. Keith Folk just exhaled. Blaylock, one of the heroes for the American League with a two-out pinch hit, two-run home run to put Mike Socia's club on top in the bottom of the eighth. And it turns into an exciting but one, two, three, ninth inning for Keith Folk. A great ball game. What a thrill here on the south side of Chicago, the 74th. Major League Baseball All-Star Game, and this one belongs to the American League, a final of 7-6. to six. We will take a break. Much more to come from Chicago as the AL takes it. 7-6. The American League homering in each of their last three at-bats, and the last swing, Mike Socia told Blaylock to go up and do it, and he does it against one of the game's best, Eric Gagne. Back after this, 7-6 American League.
telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. A two-hour, 38-minute All-Star game. 7-6 the final. American League wins it. Let's go down to the field and check in with Jeannie Zelasko. Thank you, Joe. It is the uh, commissioner of baseball walked over to me and said, you're not going to have any hard time finding me this year. You are right here. That breeze that we feel in the Windy City is the home field advantage, switching from the National League to the American League. But we have some hardware to hand out right now. And, of course, here to present the Ted Williams MVP trophy, the commissioner. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, Garrett, congratulations on being named the 2003 Ted Williams Most Valuable Player Award. Three hits tonight, leading the American League to victory in a really exciting game. Congratulations, you've had a remarkable year. On behalf of Jackie Archie, the American League, and everybody, a job really well done. Thank you, Thanks thank you very much. much. As Garrett Harrison gets the hardware, let me ask you, uh, what is there left to be done? The last time I saw you, we were handing you a, a World Series National Championship trophy, and now you've got the hardware here. Uh, you know, it's been a good year, and, uh, you know, this year's not over. Uh, our team's looking forward to keep it going, what we've been doing the last few weeks, and uh, we're looking to go to the playoffs as well. Did you feel a different intensity out here? Did you feel it in the dugout and on the field, the desire to win maybe a little more so because there was home field advantage on the line? Uh, I couldn't really tell because uh, the players that are in that dugout in that clubhouse, they come to play every day anyway. And uh, I expect that out of the players that I play against all the time anyway. All right, but you, you got to admit here, it got a little bit tense when it looked like you were going to lose it here. Oh, no doubt. I mean, you want to win. That's just the competitiveness of being an athlete. And um, we didn't give up, and Hank showed up well and uh, got a home run off a very good pitcher. You're always looking for a national form. Maybe you don't get the pub you deserve because you're out there on the West Coast. The people have seen you now in the World Series. Is this even more of a statement here at the All-Star Game? Yeah, it is more of a statement, but I have to keep doing what I'm doing to get the uh, publicity, and uh, all I want to do is just come out and play hard. All right, congratulations, Garrett Anderson, the MVP of the 2003 All-Star Game. Joe Buck? Jeannie, thank you. We switch from the MVP to a guy who I'm sure was a close second with the most dramatic swing of the bat tonight. Hank Blaylock standing by with Kevin Kennedy. Joe, a very uh, close second he had to be to Garrett Anderson, the game-winning home run. Here's a guy last year that was slated to be a, a, an all-star, yet he had a tough start. He went back to the minor leagues, you got it back, and now you're here. Give me your thoughts. I was just happy to get off to a good start in the first half so the, uh, the players could vote for me. I'm very thankful to them. And uh, to be able to do something like this in my first All-Star game is really overwhelming for me. Uh, did you realize that there was Billy Wagner down there, John Smoltz, and, of course, Eric Gagne? Had you seen any of those guys before? <laughs> and take us through the thoughts of the home run. Well, I was lucky enough to miss Smoltz in, uh, in Atlanta <laughs> all three games. But uh, I faced Wagner a couple times, and uh, that was my first time ever seeing Gagne except watching him on SportsCenter and stuff. So um, I just knew that he threw really hard with that good changeup. So just kind of pick one or the other and hope, hope you get your bat on it. You mean you watch him on Fox, too, though, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, man. <laughs> hey, congratulations, Hank. Great job. Well done. Thanks a lot. And congratulations to you making the team as well. Thanks, Kevin. All right. All right. Joe, let's go back to you. Thank you, Kevin Kennedy and Hank Blaylock, the MVP the night for Garrett Anderson. What a night for Garrett Anderson. He wins the home run derby last night. He goes single, home run, double to get that eighth inning scoring going. And it's Blaylock who puts a cap on it with a home run. 7-6 AL, back with more after this. Well, there is nothing like having a plan. Mike Sosha had a plan coming into this game, managed this game beautifully. The American League wins at 7-6. Let's go back down to Kevin Kennedy, standing by with Sosha. Mike, uh, it's a tremendous game. You said it. You were going to manage this game differently. You're going to manage to win. Uh, take us through the strategy you had, uh, really all night, but especially late in the game. Well, we had. Uh, they, they have a tr obviously a great bullpen and a great lefty-right balance with Wagner and Gagne and, and Schmoltz. And um, you know, we didn't really want to get in a bullpen war. We did anyway. But I think one of the big things was the Wagner. We wanted to make sure we got past him before we um, took Troy out and put uh, put Hank in there and. God, you couldn't have scripted it any better. It worked out great. Were you, were you a little bit nervous there, that last at bat with for call? 
I'll tell you, that little guy's got some pop, and uh, I think the wind kicked up. And on this stadium, Jerry Manuel's telling me if that ball gets up in the, up high, it'll get knocked down. But if you can keep it a little bit low, it seems like it gets in a jet stream and it'll keep going. You know, we talked about the home field advantage, and you know, you guys came back last year in the World Series, one game six, one game seven. Now, this would have been a National League year. Should you guys go to the World Series? Aren't you now pretty happy about that, that you could be back in Anaheim? Well, you know, we've <laughs> talked about it. You know what I feel. I feel it's not so much getting home field advantage as how you're playing at the time. And um, we, went, we went through two series without home field advantage, losing the first games on the road, ended up getting to the World Series. But uh, when it's all said and done, yeah. <laughs> nice job, Mike. Congratulations. Okay, let's take it back to Joe. All right, Kevin, thanks. We'll come back and have a final word. 7-6, the American League wins it. Folk gets the save in his old home park. Gagne is the loser. 7-6 AL back in a moment. Well, there's your final from the 74th Major League Baseball All-Star Game. The American League wins it, taking away home field advantage for this upcoming World Series. 7-6 the final. Joe Buck and Tim McCarver with you. A little bit of history here tonight. First time that... Well, they've been saying this time it counts. I don't know about that. Right now, let's talk about the game. What a ball. That was a fun uh, game. It, it was a terrific game that ended uh, indifferently, uh, a lot different than it started out. Only one run scored in the first half of the game and 12 scored in the last half of the so game. So what you're trying to say is that you gave up on me too I early. Did. That's you said, why I, you said yes. that it would be a high scoring night and it took a little while and it was <laughs> what 13 runs. I'll give you yeah. high score. OK, 20 hits, 13 runs. Not but, bad. But in the way that we didn't expect because it was Gagne giving up a home run. It was, I mean, the ball that Jason Giambi hit off Billy Wagner was just absolutely crushed. And because they lost the lead, John Smoltz doesn't even get a chance to pitch in this game. Yeah, I mean, you would think with a three-run lead that the National League, with those three guys from which to choose or from whom to choose, uh, would, would get it done. Unfortunately, the American League had a little bit different thought. And I think uh, going in, we talked about the two different philosophies for the managers. I think we saw it. To some degree, yep. Uh, we saw Dusty Baker really rifle through his bench, Mike Sosha, because of the way his bench was set up. In particular, Blaylock. We talked about it. He just confirmed it with Kevin Kennedy. He had to wait for the right spot to use him, and he definitely picked him for the right spot. Yeah, I think the reason Dusty Baker managed the way he managed, he had the big lead. Sosha uh, knew that he had to come back, but saving Blaylock uh, proved the right thing to do. I know one thing we'll be talking about in October. What? The 74th Major League Baseball All-Star Game. We will. Because it determines where the World Series will start. So like it or not, in October, this one will count. Final score, 7-6. to six. The American League wins it. Donnelly the winner. Gagne the loser. And the save for Folk in his return to the south side of Chicago. For more information on tonight's game and the latest in Major League Baseball news, log on to FoxSports.com. Fox Saturday Baseball will continue this week. It all starts with This Week in Baseball, 1230 Eastern and Pacific. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. The 74th Major League Baseball All-Star Game has been a presentation of Fox Sports, your home for the 2003 baseball postseason. For Mike Weissman, Bill Webb, and many, many others, I'm Joe for Tim and all the rest. So long, 7-6 American League.